Good morning. Well, thank you for coming to the IIH clinic. My name's Dr. Sinclair. Pleased to meet you. Hello, I'm Dr. Sinclair. Yeah. My friend Norma has come supporting me this morning. I'm one of the neurology consultants that works at University Hospital Birmingham, and we run an IIH clinic here, and this is my colleague, Miss Mollen. Hello. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Good morning. Miss Mollen works in the ophthalmology department and has a special interest in IIH oh. as well. So what we're hoping to do this morning is to, as usual, run through our, your history, talk a little bit about how you're doing, and then we're going to examine your eyes and talk a little bit about IIH. Okay. Is there any questions that you had before we get going? Well, firstly, I would like to know what is IIH? Fantastic. Okay. Well, IIH is a condition that has a number of different names. So some people call it IIH, which stands for idiopathic intracranial hypertension. But in in the past, we've also had a number of other names. So we've called it benign intracranial hypertension. So some people call it BIH. Some people have called it pseudotumor cerebri. And in the past, they've even called it water on the brain. But they, all those conditions really mean the same thing. And it really describes a condition that's fairly rare. So it's about two per 100,000 patients. But actually, we know that in the patients who are more overweight and are female, it's a higher incidence, about 20 per 100,000. And we also know that we're seeing more and more IIH, so we can monitor the hospital statistics of admissions with IIH to hospitals. And we can see that in the UK, the numbers of people having IIH is going up year on year. And we can see that that's really probably tracking in line with us all becoming um, more overweight over the years. But it does remain rare at the moment. But the other problem with IIH is it affects people for a long time. So people will often have this condition for up to around 10 years or so, um, suffering with different aspects of the disease. The condition itself is really characterised by raised brain pressure. Has anybody talked to you about that sort of thing before? Have, yes. Yeah, so the, the raised brain pressure in IIH is interesting. We know that there's no lesion within the brain, i.e. no tumour or bleeding within the brain, but there still is this raised brain pressure. And it's still debated as to really why the brain is at pressure. It could possibly be due to more fluid. This is the cerebrospinal fluid, which you see all around the brain and all the way down your spinal cord. So there could be too much fluid being produced. Or it could be a problem with that fluid being drained away, i.e. The, the, the drainage apparatus of the brain or the veins may be impairing the ability of the brain to get rid of and drain that fluid. So we know the fluid is raised, or we know the pressure is raised in the brain. So then, um, we come on to thinking about, well, how does this affect you? And how, how do patients um, present with their IIH? So perhaps, Miss Morgan, you might like to talk a little bit about how um, patients' eyes are affected by IIH. Yeah, because I was told I had swelling of my optic nerve. So can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so quite often when people have headaches, uh, their family doctors or even their family members tell them to visit the optician to have a look at the back of the eyes. And a lot of our patients come in through opticians. The opticians uh, examine the back of the eyes and realise that there's swelling on the optic nerve. The optic nerve is uh, the, the, the piece of the brain that transmits the images from the eyes to the brain that allows us to see. And it's quite obvious in a lot of cases when there is actually swelling there. Um, so when that's identified, people should come up as an emergency to be seen because we need to run through the investigations to ensure that there's no problem that needs urgent attention in the brain. <coughs> Often with the headaches that some people get, which is an, uh, a sort of daily headache that increases over a number of weeks, but with their eyes essentially, uh, they can get what we call as transient visual obscurations. And that's really a greying out of vision. Often they first notice it when they're bending down to put their yeah, shoes on in the morning, or when they get up in the morning. Uh, they can notice that. And sometimes when they get this very frequently, it can be a sign that the, the, the brain pressure has been there for some time and is getting worse. 